Hey folks, I kind of want to go over Packet Tracer 11.5.5 because I had a few students having some problems with this. Um, it's actually kind of relatively easy if you remember the formulas. Remember, we do we do 2 to the x. x is the number of ones we have to add to the default subnet mask. And that tells us how many subnets we can have or how many networks we can have. And then 2 to the y, y meaning the number of zeros in the subnet mask, um, shows us our range or the space between networks. So if, if we kind of scroll down, it says, hey, you got to do some blood stuff. So we start with 192.168.0.0 slash 24. So slash 24 is our default subnet mask. And they want you to create four networks. The first one has to have 50, then the second one has to have 40, and then the next two they don't really tell you, so they could be anything. All right, and then the key here is they tell you that it's not going to be variable length subnet mass, so all the subnet mass are going to be the same. So this is just a very simple um, subnetting problem. Uh, no variable length subnet mass. So kind of go through there, blah, they kind of give you some more stuff, and they kind of walk you through like really kind of how to do the process. And again, the Cisco way, like they always show like you convert everything into binary. I've never been very happy with that. And then they want you to pop in the addresses. So. We know that 2 to the x is going to give us the number of subnets. And they're already giving us the number of subnets because they're telling us we need four networks. So they always either give you the number of networks you need or they give you the number of ones they added to the subnet mask. So they always give you either this, the, the exponent, or they give you the answer. So we know it's, it's 2 to the question mark equals 4. So that means it's 2 to the 2. So two, the member, the exponent tells us how many ones we have to add to the default subnet mask. So the default subnet mask is 24. So if we add two, that means there's going to be 26 ones in the subnet mask. Okay. Then there's always 32 bits in a subnet mask. If 26 of them are ones, then six of them have to be zeros. So y is number of zeros in the subnet mask, and that gives us our subnets. So if we do 2 to the y equals 64, because we know it's 2 to the, we know y is 6, so 2 to the 6th power is 64. So that's the space between our subnets. So a lot of books, a lot of videos kind of show you this complicated, can I convert the whole thing into binary, blah, 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 and just, you just get confused. Just remember, 2 to the x, x is the number of ones we add to the default subnet mask. 2 to the y, y is just the number of zeros in the subnet mask. And that will give you the number of net subnets, subnets or networks or the space between them. So now that we know the space between them is 64, we start our range chart. So 0 plus 64, plus 64, plus 64, plus 64. Eventually you'll hit 256, and 256 is the cutoff. That's when you know that everything is, your math is correct and everything's working. If you get 257 or 259, your math is wrong somewhere. Uh, it has to end in 256. It always does. So then we just subtract 1 from 256 and we get 255. We subtract 1 from 192 and we get 191. Subtract 1 from 128, we get 127. And then you just fill in the middle. So if I do this, let me get this correct. So this is going to be 1 to 62. This is going to be 65 to 126. 129 to 190. 193 to 254. So there's your four subnets. And if I put the little line in there, one, two, three, and four. So that's what you'll use to fill this in. So they want the subnet address. That's going to be the very first. Remember, this is the network ID. This is what routers use to route. These, the, the middle column is the usable, which you can actually assign to hosts. And then this um, column here is the broadcast. So if, if my PC is on this first network, and I first start it up and he needs to um, get a DHCP address, he's going to send to 63 and broadcast out to the entire subnet looking for that DHCP server. Um, but then he's going to get an IP address between 1 and 62. And then the, the network that this routes to is going to be network 0. So when you fill that in, it'll look like this. Remember, um, 0, 0, 64, 64, 128. Remember, that first column is what we use for our routers. We route to subnet IDs or the subnet identifiers. We don't route to every usable IP address. Think about how the internet works. If we had to list every usable IP address, those routing tables would be massive, you know, like thousands of pages long. So we only route to networks. 
All right, and then they say, okay, now we're going to start assigning those addresses. So the first host address for the customer router interface, so when that's going to be the first subnet, so subnet zero. Um, and again, I say subnet zero, but we usually say like subnet zero, subnet 64, subnet 128. And sometimes they get confusing because they'll say the first subnet, which would be subnet zero. Other times they say subnet number one. Well, subnet number one would actually be this because this is subnet zero. Remember, Cisco always starts at zero. So if they say the first, that is the first. But if they say number one, then they always Cisco always labels their network zero through whatever. So make sure you're aware of that. All right. So we're going to do the first subnet to the customer router, uh, and we're going to use the very first address. Well, that's nice and easy. So the one that goes to A, and remember you can do options, preferences, uh, and show port labels. So that's going to be gigabit zero zero. Turn that off. It's it still too busy. And I'm going to go here. Now you can cheat and go to the config. Oh, they locked it. No cheating today. Uh, CLI, okay. All right, enable config T interface TI 00. IP address 192.168.0.1 space 255.255.255.192. Enter, and then no shut. And that one's up. Woo, and we're already up to a whopping 13%. All right, use the second address for land for the switch, and then we have to assign a default gateway to the switch, which is always going to point to the router. So no anywhere where you're at and you're doing a default gateway, the default gateway always points to the closest router interface. In this case, it's going to be this interface here for these guys. All right, so first we need to assign that IP address. And enable... Don't fat finger it. So we're going to go to interface VLAN 1 and IP address 192.168.0.2.255.255.255.192. And I always just do no shut even though you don't theoretically need that there. All right, then I need to exit out, back into global mode. All right, and then it's just IP default gateway, default dash gateway, and then the IP address 192.168.0.1 dot one because it wants to point to the router I think you need to do a subnet mask here I can't remember no no subnet mask Boom. okay Ooh, look at that we're up to 26 all right use the last host address for PCA so if I go to PCA and desktop and IP address remember from our range chart let me bring that sucker up the last host address is 62 so he's going to be 192.168.0.62. And he's not going to have that default subnet mask because we changed it. And his default gateway is always going to be the router, 192.168.0.1. And we're all set. Close that. And 39. Woo, look at that. No, no, let's check. Just checking. So uh, we did the, the router correct, we did the switch correct, and we did the PC correct. So we're all set. All right, so now you have all the information. Let me move this over. So now you need to do the same thing to subnet B. So you're going to use the second subnet. So 65 is going to be the first address, 66 is going to be the second address, and 126 is going to be for the, uh, the host PC. So again, you're going to IP this, remember to options, preferences, show port labels, that is gigabit zero one. And then you're gonna do the same thing with the switch and the same thing with the PC. And that should get you up to about almost 80%. Then you're going to configure the enable secret password and I'll kind of like go through that just to show you real quick. All right, let me bring up the router. And this, so I can kind of see them both. All right, so I need to go to exit. And first thing they went to, they went the enable secret. So, wow, spelling is not my forte. Enable secret. 
and it's going to be C L A class one two three with a capital C. Remember, you have to put everything in there exactly the way they do. So that's the enable secret. Then we need to do the console, and that's line console zero, and then we do password Cisco one two three. Then we need to turn it on with login. Then I need to exit out of that. Then they want to set the host name. So host name, again, same thing that they use. If you did not uppercase that R, it would not mark you correct. All right, and then configure interface. We already did that, and they're already enabled. And then save the running config to the starting config. So then we need to do an end. Go to privilege mode, and we do copy, run, start. And enter to confirm. And you do the same thing with, actually, I don't think you do, do, you do the other switch. Sorry. Configure IP addresses on VUN1 to make sure blah, blah, blah. All right, that we already did. Configure the IP address, subnet mask, and default gateways on the PCs. Theoretically, that should already be done. And then you should be able to ping. All right, if you guys have any questions, let me know. Other than that, have a great week.